Hi, my name is Beatrice Marinello. I'm a FIDE Vice President and also an international organizer, a woman international master, and I am just seen in New York. Well, the FIDE is the World Chess Federation, or it's also known as the International Chess Federation, um, which is recognized by the International Olympic Committee. And we have about 178 countries affiliated to FIDE. I have been working in the, you know, in the area of leadership and chess for many years uh, here in the United States. Um, and then eventually it's a natural progression to get more involved in, you know, in the international arena. Um, in the beginning I started, um, I got involved, well, my main focus was scholastic chess, which co it continues to be something that, you know, is very important in my life. And now in the last 10 years I have been working also in social chess. We can talk a little bit about that because it's very interesting. Um, so back in the year uh, 2002, I became um, General Secretary of FIDE Americas when um, Jorge Vega became Continental President. So, and starting that year, you know, I began my work in FIDE, although previously I attended meetings, uh, FIDE meetings, uh, at that point I got an official position in FIDE. So my first one was General Se Secretary for America. Then um, I became, along the way, I became USCF President, SONA President, uh, the US is a son. And then eventually in 2010, I was elected uh, FIDE Vice President. I was with a ticket of Kersana Luzhinov. And um, so I was the first woman elected FIDE Vice President in the history of chess. Well, <laughs> I've been traveling a lot all my life. It's not a new thing. Um, I guess it's destiny. I started uh, when I was 16 years old as a player. I, I was always moving, going to different places. Um, then eventually I came to play in, the, in, in New York, in the New York Open. I stayed in the United States and, and I always continue traveling. But um, I have a very tight agenda, obviously, and I travel a lot. Yes. I was born in Chile, I'm South American, I live in North America, so I guess I'm, I'm an American all the way, you know, from the South, but I live in the North now. Well, well we, need to, we need to understand that chess, I mean, women in chess is a fairly new concept, you know, throughout history. We have been uh, well, less women. Um, not for a long time, women were not allowed uh, to play in chess clubs or to be as active as men has been throughout history. So it's something new, and of, of course there are some differences too. I mean, somehow we have different roles in society. But now that we have a more a society that tends to find equalities and give us more opportunities. Uh, things are improving. Yeah, the prize funds are not there yet, but I can tell you an interesting data for in the world. You know, we're talking about women and girls who are ranked with a World Chess Federation. For girls under, for women age 21 and under, that means younger than 21, the percentage of women in comparison with men is 24%. But the overall percentage, including an over 21, for women over 21, is about 6%. six percent. So obviously, this is changing. It's a movement now in a scholastic chess that is bringing a lot of girls. And hopefully at some point we will have a more even field 
so we will be able to you know to compete in equal, in equal situations eh? it's happening all over the world all over i mean including in, in cultures that traditionally women don't seem to be as active as men like in the middle east you go to the chess olympiad and you see a team from Iran, a team from India, from China, the USA, Armenia, Russia, South America, Chile, Argentina, Colombia, Mexico, you know, the islands, Africa. Africa is now is a new, uh, is a new, the, is, is the area where chess is going and it's helping people. And we see a lot of African team. Um, you know the girl who became very famous from Uganda, um, Fiona Mutasi, and I think that's changing. Now we have women all over the world playing, and that's a wonderful thing. Yeah, there are differences in many... Every chess is different in every place. Um, and it has been changing. I have been in the U.S. and a U.S. citizen, obviously, and a Chilean citizen as well. You know, I never forget my my native country. It's important to me. Um, but in 24 years that I have been in the United States, I could see as almost a quarter of a century. I see the development of chess. I mean, we always had a good tradition here, but now it's so much bigger. Uh, it's more diverse. You see, well, we're here in New York, where chess is huge. You see people playing in the park, uh, their clubs, their tournaments. There is chess in the schools, almost in every school, public school, private school, charter schools. Um, and it's a fantastic uh, place, I mean, for chess. So many people, so much appreciation for chess. There are other countries that um, they don't have the infrastructure that we have. They don't have the leadership that we have. I think the U.S. Have, has greatly benefited from, uh, from the immigration. People who came here, like myself, that we came with a lot of energy uh, and good expertise. And those people, they have been working really hard. And it has been a good mix because now we see, you know, it's very interesting for me to see a lot of new uh, young people from the U.S., I mean, Americans, that they are looking at chess as a profession. We are seeing them moving from other cities to New York City because they want to do something with chess. And that's very interesting to see. There are a number of young players. Um, I think uh, one of the players, I mean, there are many, actually. I wouldn't like to mention a name and leave anybody out. But I do want to um, mention three African-American players who I believe they have great talent um, and they are the best. That would be Justice Williams, uh, Joshua Collas, and, um, and James Black. Those three players are very good. And there are many others. I mean, this is it's really amazing to see what is going on here. A lot of talent. And a lot of girls playing, a lot of diversity, people from different communities, the Asian communities, you know, the, it's, it's amazing. It's a very big uh, um, and wonderful group of people. Well, I must say that I have great respect for Gary Kasparov as a chess player, as a world champion. I admire him tremendously from, you know, I love his games. And he has been a, you know, a positive force in the, in the sense of, you know, being a strong player, trying to always promote chess. Um, also very attractive person with a lot of charisma that, was, you know, we have the man versus machine match, was, was very important. Um, he, he's a very appealing person to the media. And, um, uh, well, now, actually, we have a person with, which I believe is going to be, who I believe is going to be even more more important from that end is Magnus Carson. For many reasons, I think he, he will be probably far more than any, only far more famous and far more uh, 
attractive than any other player in the past, including Bobby Fischer. But, but um, I think in terms of um, Gary Kasparov's campaign to, to FIDE, I personally don't think he will be a good president of FIDE. Um, he basically tried to destroy FIDE in the past, but when he was a world champion, he tried to break away with a title and put together his own organization to organize the world championship match. And, um, and that was a big blow to the World Chess Federation, impacting not just the organization, also all the federations that they are part of the, 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 the part of FIDE. Um, we will see what happens. I think a democracy is very important. I mean, I, we should go through the election. Um, this is an opportunity also for people to look at at the chess wall and say, well, at least they have a democratic election, they have two candidates, let them do their best campaigning and people will decide, you know, who they want to choose as their next FIDE president. Well, I, I learned how to play by, I had a neighbor that, you know, that I used to spend a lot of time with him. You know, I used to love science fiction and playing games. So I used to go to his house and one day I went to his house and he was playing chess with another kid. And I just sat there and I started watching the game and then they asked me if I wanted to play and I said yes. And I started learning how to move the pieces there. Uh, my math teacher put together a chess club. Uh, his name was Luis Rojas. So I started going to his chess club on Saturdays and, and playing there. And then at some point, I, I went to the chess club and, and I started competing. Well, because we don't have sponsors. Basically, that's the reality of it. Um, the organizers, they run the tournaments based on memberships, I mean, no memberships, entry fees. And I think that's basically, you know, everybody pays to play in tournaments and based on the price, on the entries, they determine the price fund. Um, sometimes the other way around, they say, okay, this amount, warranty, but based on this number of players. So that's the reality, is the, the way how we do things in the United States. I don't think we have an organized group of people actively seeking for sponsors. Um, I'm sure if there was you know, a marketing firm dedicated to just look for sponsors, we can find sponsors. But um, when we get bad press, uh, when, um, you know, when we have these uh, elections, and people attack each other and say things sometimes that that harm harm the possibility of a sponsorship. But in um, in in the United States, the issue is that, and it's, it's actually across the board. And what we find is most of the sponsors are connected to chess, or they have somebody that they know that is connected to chess. But um, but it hasn't that it hasn't been easy for us to sell chess to sponsors. However, we do attract a lot of philanthropy, uh, philanthropists. There, in the United States, there are over 300 non-for-profit organizations, 501 C3s, exclu exclusively dedicated to, um, to raise funds for chess in the schools. And now my next, I mean, uh, what I want to do is actually also get into the area of raising funds for social chess, for like the prevention of uh, illness associated with brain aging, also for you know working with girls, you know for equalities, um, to support uh, chess in areas where chess is not developed yet, and I, I think that's what we are doing. Chess is very big, and it's a huge market. We have a lot of resources. It's true we don't have like um, you know, big sponsorship tournaments, uh, but on the other hand, we do have a lot of a big base 
we have a lot of fundings, um, but they're all based on and by people who are out there working. Um, and in the United States, chess is driven by uh, private groups. I think the, the US Chess Federation and the former president of the organization just basically provides the rating ser services. Um, but the benefits that they offer to the community, they don't really um, translate into generating more people. What is attracting people to chess is chess in the schools, the work that we are doing, you know, the, the, with the grassroots, and, um, and, and the fact that we're many of us, that we're very energetic, and we're always looking for opportunities to, to do something for chess. We're, there are many people, there are volunteers. All of us, we work very hard. And, um, and I would say that probably half of what we do is volunteer work because we coordinate with the families, we get the schools, and we get the children involved. It's, uh, it takes a lot of work, and we're very happy to do it, obviously. <laughs>